fighters. The Reagan administration is selling the Saudis extended range fuel tanks and air to air missiles for the aircraft. Israel opposes a sale and in a move to placate the Jewish state, the White House says it will give that nation $700 million over the next two years to beef up its air defense arsenal. The White House says today's action is designed to bolster security in the Mideast. You know, I was off yesterday and I didn't get a chance to talk to you. I had to drive up to Atlantic City. Mm -hmm. Drove up there in sleet and rain, drove back in rain and snow. Oh. <laughs> That's a nice combination. You had it going and coming, didn't you? Drove very slow. Yes, yeah, I would hope so. Well, that's about over for this year. Thank you. You won't have to worry about that uh, going in certain directions anyway. Sure, thank goodness or just thank you? Go, either way. <laughs> go into the mountains and you could run into some snow still before the snow season's over. What are we doing out there right now? At the moment, we're at 43 degrees. Relative humidity is 37%. Wind is from the west, northwest at 15 miles an hour, gusting to 25 and the barometer is rising. Color radar too shows there's a couple of flurries still going on right in about here, just on the eastern Maryland and over into Delaware, right along the borderline right there. Just a small area of snow flurries. If you're watching me there, look out the window and enjoy them. They're about through for this year. We're sitting right here, of course. There's Baltimore and Washington down in here with the skies pretty well clear, at least completely clear as far as any rain or snow is concerned. So the satellite picture moves in now. We look at that from outer space, and there's what we see. Some cloud cover and some snow on the ground up through the Great Lakes, some still falling up in there, and we're right on the dividing line. So we've had a mixture of cloud cover and some sunshine. You can see down in the southeast, all clear skies there. The next little area of rain and snow is moving in in the western part of the country. Let me show you how that's going because it will have some effect on us. The high pressure center itself that's taking care of us is sitting right here. That's the biggie. It's pumping in that cold but dry air so our clouds will continue to thin out a little bit each day and temperatures will start to moderate a little bit each day with a little more sunshine. This system will move off the coast, but right now, out here, there's, we'll just make one L. There's actually three of them stretched down there, and it's producing a big area of snow, a good-sized late winter snowstorm moving into the plains now. That will be spreading in our direction. I expect it will stay too far south to do much more to, to us than to bring us a couple of clouds about uh, Sunday night or during Monday. And tomorrow morning, what do you expect? Well, about 8 o'clock, you can look for partly cloudy skies and 32 degrees to be the story. And Kurt, this is the point where we always take a quick trip around the country. I've picked out 30 different cities and made a forecast for them, so we'll look and see what the rest of our country will look like tomorrow. For example, if you went to Atlanta, you'd have sunshine in 63, and be some snow in Buffalo and Cheyenne. Cleveland, I'm saying cloudy, could be flurries there as well. Denver will get some of that snow we are just talking about out in the west snow in Minneapolis. So it's still around the rest of the country and some rain, but our weekend generally will be a mixture of clouds and sun, a little bit breezy and temperatures working their way up to 50 degrees. So that's not too tough to take. Partly sunny and 43 for us. Doesn't sound too bad, does it? Not at all. Good. Okay, thank I'll you. be back at six and talk some more. Very good. Thank you very much. Sure. Well, it appears that the execution of convicted murderer Stephen Judy will take place as scheduled. Today, the Indiana Parole Board rejected a clemency petition filed by the American Civil Liberties Union and several religious groups in Judy's name. Judy did not want the petition filed on his behalf, saying that he'd rather die than to live out his life in prison. He received the death penalty after being convicted of raping and murdering a 21-year-old woman and murdering her three young children back in 1979. Coming up, a report on state investigation into prepaid eye care plans. Stay with us as 530 continues. Let's get Baltimore rolling. Buy a new Camaro or Monte Carlo from Jerry Chevrolet now, and Chevrolet Motor Division will give you $700 in cash. Put it in your pocket or use it as a down payment. We have hundreds of Camaros and Monte Carlos ready for instant delivery. When you consider our policy of huge discounts, big trades, easy financing, and Chevrolet's offer of $700 in cash paid directly to you, your car buying decision is an easy one. It's the best of all worlds. Compare all you care to, but for the best deal anywhere, you got to come to Jerry's. London, what an exciting place to be. London fog, what an exciting way to look. Everything from new lightweight raincoats and fabulous new colors to sensational outdoors unlimited weekend jackets with all the right details. And great looking action jackets too. Enter the exciting London Fog Weekend Windfall now to win this AMC Jeep Renegade filled with AMF Leisure Time products. London Fog Weekend Windfall going on now at Hoshul Cove. 
Come to Sears Big Sale. Save on every major home appliance, every furniture item, every TV and stereo, every carpet during Sears Big Sale. They've been married for 25 years and have three grown children, but their marriage is not monogamous. Instead, they live in an open marriage and are both engaged in relationships with other lovers outside their marriage. And on our next show, we'll meet this California couple along with his lovers who range in age from 28 to 72. We'll also meet their two sons. How do they feel about all this? Open marriage. Monday at 9 a.m. on Channel 2. The vision care industry in Maryland is being investigated by the state insurance commissioner. Now, because many of the optical businesses have been offering prepaid vision care, they've been accused of offering a form of insurance without having an insurance license. So the insurance commissioner has subpoenaed the records of Pearl Vision, Sears Roebuck, Montgomery Wards, and many other firms offering vision care. The United Optical Company was mentioned specifically and the others generally. In a complaint filed by Vision Care Services, a nonprofit firm, Thomas Ramundi, the insistent insurance commissioner, says that the complaint was based on a decision by the insurance commission last year that a similar prepaid dental plan was a form of insurance. You know, there are, there are insurance companies that offer vision care programs like Blue Shield, Blue Cross of Maryland, Travers. Uh, uh, vision Care Center is, a, is an insurance company doing business in the vision care business. And their contention is that their, their competitors are, in effect, offering programs and services which constitute insurance. But the vision care firms have complained that becoming a license as an insurance firm would require big cash reserves and other restrictions which would increase the cost to customers. The insurance commissioner will settle the dispute at a hearing on March the 24th. Well, there are many couples honeymooning in Baltimore tonight. They were introduced at a matchmaking fair earlier today. Now, the product of these unions will not be children, but it's hoped more business for the minority enterprise. Reporter Francis Harden has more on the Mid-Atlantic Matchmaker. Northwestern Security supplies guards to companies that need them. It's located in the black community on Pennsylvania Avenue. Omni Graphics makes such things as signs, letterheads, and business cards. It's on St. Paul Street. Though they're in different businesses in different parts of town, both are minority-owned businesses. And both were among the 75 such enterprises represented at today's Mid-Atlantic Matchmaker. The idea, to bring the providers of goods and services together with potential buyers. We found that what these minority companies needed more than capital was management experience, management ability, and we began giving them that, and then we found they needed markets. And so markets were the key to the whole thing, and that's why we launched this effort. Robert Stewart is chairman of the board of National Can. Stewart helped launch the matchmaking fairs eight years ago. We started in 1972 by identifying a handful of companies that were then supplying about $87 million worth of business uh, to the private, to the minority vendors. Uh, last year, though our figures are still unofficial, we estimate we did three and a half billion dollars annual volume. That's only part of the solution. Terry Addison is a member of HUB, an organization devoted to encouraging black business. Addison says the black community well, must do its part to too. It. It's kind of ironic. It's like um, we as parents, you know, we tend to try and get our children to go to school and become doctors, lawyers, and at the same time, we don't support the doctors and lawyers that are out there. Some minority businessmen still say it's hard to get loans from white-owned commercial banks. Terry Addison says that problem may be on its way to being solved when the black-owned Harbor Bank opens later this spring. I'm Francis Harden, on the scene in Baltimore. Right now, a Senate Budget Subcommittee in Annapolis is considering whether to cut funds for a center in Owings Mills that treats compulsive gamblers. The state spends $100,000 a year to run this center, the only one of its kind in America. It's a center that treats people like the man Mary Norton met. He is finally able to control his compulsive gambling thanks to the program offered at the center. Before, he'd been obsessed with gambling all his life. It was a young man... Uh playing cards uh, with friends, nickel dime poker games. Uh, then I discovered uh, the four-legged animals, horses. I was never a casino gambler. I just loved, I, I can't even say I loved going to the track. It was a place for me to escape, to escape reality. And in, as, a, as the disease progressed, uh, a place for me to do harm to myself. Compulsive gambling costs a lot. 
On the average, this type of gambler loses more than $3,500 a month. They often lose their jobs also and may steal to support their habit. Initially, the money was gotten by legitimate means, um, loans, credit cards, uh, blowing everything that I had in the way of salary and income. And when I tapped out those sources, it was bad check writing, um, embezzlement from firms that I worked for, uh, never to any great degree. I mean, there are horror stories that come through this place and through GA in, in the million. More than 100 compulsive gamblers are treated here. When they're gambling, each one loses more than $42,000 a year. How much does the state pay to run this place? About $100,000. People here think that's a small price to pay for the amount of money and the lives that they save. This is Mary Norton on the scene in Owings Mills. We're coming up. A tribute to Walter Cronkite, who steps down as the anchor of the CBS Evening News tonight. Stay with us. Fox sells one out of every four Chevys sold in this market. We are a direct factory authorized outlet. Our salespeople are factory trained. Our service people are factory trained. We use genuine factory parts. Our discounts are factory sanctioned. And that's why you get the best value at Fox. The Chevrolet Auto and Truck Discount Center, a direct factory authorized outlet, Security Boulevard at Beltway Exit 17, our only location on the East Coast. You've got the look, you've got the look. If you want to make the moves, you got to get the look. Joy Dash has the fit that's right. Get the moves with the Pearl basketball shoe from Joy Dash, available at fine stores. If you want to win the Maryland Weekly Lottery, you'll just have to buy some tickets in the Weekly Lottery. That's what Henry Taylor did. You gotta play it, the Maryland Lottery. You gotta play it, play it to win. You gotta play it, the Maryland Lottery. You gotta play it, play it to win. You just take the fortune by the hand. We've got a great lottery in Maryland. You gotta play it, you gotta play it. You gotta play, gotta play to win. This Saturday is your chance to save money on quality carpet at Bill's Carpet Warehouse. Yes, this Saturday at Bill's, save one half on Broadloom Remnants, on sale for $20 and $40. Huge 12 by 15s are only $66. Quality Broadloom is priced as low as $3.88 a square yard. Remember, Saturday means special savings at Bill's. If you need carpet and don't see Bill's Saturday, you are making a big mistake. Well, the Girl Scouts today kicked off the 1981 cookie sale with their annual cookie crunch. And our own Stu Kerr served as a master of cer ceremonies, watching as local personalities tried to eat as many cookies as possible in three minutes. The winner today was Todd Grimstead of WPOC Radio, who ate 86 cookies. Todd, though, was also the winner last year with 108 cookies. Todd didn't give any explanation why he didn't eat as many this year, but I'm sure there was a good reason. New scene with Tom Sweeney is coming up next, and uh, Tom is standing by in the newsroom with some of the stories that he'll be covering. Tom? Sure, I'm just glad I didn't have to eat cookies today. Well, at the top of tonight's news scene, we go back to Hagerstown, where a sick out by guards is over there. However, tonight we're going to talk with the head of the union, who makes the statement that the prison system statewide is uh, in chaos. And unless the governor does something within a week, there will be a job action statewide involving an awful lot of guards. We'll cover that story and much more in just a few minutes on News Scene at 6. But for now, Kurt, back to you and more 5.30. Okay, thank you, Tom. And an hour from now, Walter Cronkite will sign off the CBS Evening News for the last time. And for young and old alike, a familiar and trusted figure will no longer come into the living rooms every night. Charles Osgood has a report on the remarkable career of Walter Cronkite. Walter Cronkite has been part of our lives for a long time now. Here he was in 1952. Hello, everyone. Here we are again in Studio A, our CBS television control point for the Westinghouse coverage, this time of the Democratic National Convention. Uh, Since then, we've all lived through go. good news and bad. For millions of Americans, the events will always be linked in our memories with the man who told us about them. There were triumphs. Now, breaking up some dust. Okay, engine stop. We copy you down, Eagle. Man on the moon. 
Oh, boy. Thank you. You're wow. looking good here. Mm. Mm. Boy. <laughs> okay, we're going to be busy for a minute. Here is a bulletin from CBS News. And there were disasters. The first reports say that President Kennedy has been seriously wounded by this shooting. He was wounded in an automobile driving from Dallas Airport into downtown Dallas, along with Governor Connolly of Texas. They've been taken to Parkland Hospital there, where their condition is as yet unknown. Through Vietnam. To say that we are closer to victory today is to believe, in the face of the evidence, the optimists who have been wrong in the past. To suggest we are on the edge of defeat is to yield to unreasonable pessimism. To say that we are mired in stalemate seems the only realistic, if unsatisfactory, conclusion. Through Watergate. At first it was called the Watergate Caper. Five men, apparently caught in the act of burglarizing and bugging Democratic headquarters in Washington. He became the most trusted man in America, not all at once, but over time. We're not defending a precious right of our own, of freedom of speech and freedom of press. What we're defending is the people's right to know. And in the process, as he got older, for some reason, he seemed to get better looking, which a lot of us would like to find out how you do. He walked with kings and presidents and never lost the common touch. Nor, as managing editor of the CBS Evening News, did he ever lose that enthusiasm for a good news story. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Well, thank you, Walter. It's good to be here again, and I know you must be having a little nostalgia, the many presidents that you've covered in this very room. Indeed so, sir. It's, uh, it's been a long time now. I, I was counting back. It's eight presidents. Well, I, uh, it's been a remarkable period in our history. Well, and, uh, may I express appreciation? You've, you've always been a pro. I only regret that I'm stepping down from the evening news at the time when uh, you're bringing such a drama to our government again. <laughs> this is the CBS Evening News with Walter Cronkite. Good evening, President Reagan. For very nearly 20 years, the evening news was his. But all things end, as all things must. And that's the way it is. Tuesday, March 3rd, 1981. This is Walter Cronkite, CBS News. Good night. One last time. That's 5.30. Toby Marsh will be back on Monday. For Ken Phillips and Joan Gartland, I'm Kurt Anderson. New scene with Tom Sweeney is coming up. What's going on at Ethan Allen? Ethan Allen's winter sale. Winter's my favorite time of year. Final days to save during the Ethan